Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back. Richard, we're talking again about success, but this is a slightly different twist on success. Mm -hmm. This is another article from Medium, um, and this one's written by uh, Jeff Goins, Goins, and it's entitled, Here's Why You're Bored Right After Your Biggest Accomplishment and What to Do About It. I always imagine those parenthetical phrases as, as, as little whispers, whispers. <laughs> and what we need to do about it. No. So, so yeah, here's why you're bored right after your biggest accomplishment. Right. So what we're talking about here is for many people, and I, and I have experienced this before, mm-hmm. um, like, so this is, this is why this article struck me because, you know, you, you work hard, you right. train, you do all these things, you, mm-hmm. you put all this energy into, to achieving something, you achieve it and then whew, everything just drops. Yeah. It's like, what's the big deal? Yeah. Right. I always tell my students, um, about doctoral students and I'll say to them, there's no, um, adequate way to celebrate the completion of a dissertation. Right. Because you're just flat and tired and oh. there's there's this feeling of deflation. You know, at a time when you think you're gonna be elated because you finally finished this project, there's no feeling at all. They're just like I can okay. still remember that. Right. It was terrible. And and that's what he's talking about yeah. here. Yeah. Um, we've we've written a couple of books and you get a book contract and you think, oh man, this is gonna make me feel so good. I'm gonna be so then you get it and it's like Okay, well, what's the big deal? You know, yeah. now not... I gotta work. Right now I have to do it. The bad news is, but and he talks about um, if a book ends up on the bestseller list, you know, right. that would be a goal that any writer would right. would look forward to. But you you hear the news that you're on the bestseller list, and it leaves you sort of flat. Like, yeah. oh, okay, fine, but doesn't doesn't really excite me that much. And yeah, there's almost a, a sense of not dis well, almost disappointment because right. you think you're going to be so happy and you're not. It's not as climactic no. as you would expect mm-hmm. it to be. No. Um, and so, so he, he talks here about why does that happen? Why does it happen? Right. And what again? What to do about it? Right. Right. So, so why does it happen? Well, there's a variety of reasons. I think that there's a variety of reasons why it happens. You know, one of course is um, your brain. You know, the, and this is what I thought of when I when I experienced it myself, both with my dissertation and and, mm-hmm. and some athletic things and everything like that. Mm-hmm. What I thought about was, you know, you work hard, so you have all of this reinforcement, all of this, um, you know, energy that you're putting into achieving this goal. Okay, right. And then when you achieve it, it's like, okay, now I'm not working towards anything. Right. That's you right. know, um, we talked yesterday about, you know, one of the one of the 30 things to to help make you right. unstoppable is to never be satisfied. Right. Well, right. what happens is sometimes when we set those goals, we're satisfied with meeting that goal and we don't right. have the next goal. That's right. And because of that, we, we lose our steam right. and we just drop off. Mm-hmm. And, and I think a lot of that is neurochemical. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of reinforcement that goes from knowing that I'm meeting this goal. I'm meeting this goal. I'm meeting this goal and here comes the ultimate goal and it's like great. N- now what? Right. Now right. I don't have an I don't have a next goal because the energy comes from performance. The energy yes. comes from doing it, not right. from achieving it. Exactly. And we can come up with all sorts of analogies that all mm-hmm. of you have heard. It's the journey, not yeah. the destination. Right. We're uh, approaching an important religious holiday in right. December called Christmas. Mm-hmm. And it's always a bit of a disappointment right. after all the gifts are. So you wait and you anticipate and you're excited and you're baking and you're cooking and you're buying and you're planning. And then all of a sudden it's over. Okay. Right. And that's a perfect analogy. Right for this same phenomenon, right. that it happens in all areas of our life. It's the journey, not the destination. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and part of that, I think, as I was saying, mm-hmm. it, I think is, is chemical, because right. there's a lot of chemicals that are released when you have that, right. uh, that, that positive affirmation of meeting those mm-hmm. short-term goals. But it's also psychological, right. uh, very psychological, because as you said, it, it's the journey. So you, you're on this path with this destination, mm-hmm. and you know you're going somewhere. Mm-hmm. But when you get there, if there's not, if the path doesn't continue, right. if right. there's nothing that follows that, 
psychologically, right. it's mm-hmm. it's the end, and that's what makes us feel um, incomplete. That makes right. us feel empty. When um, we did a, a talk earlier in the week about the seven seconds, right, and one of the things that those coaches advise. And one of the things that Dr. Rosen advised is you don't celebrate your success and you don't agonize over your failures. Uh, Right. This is your seven seconds. Now it's time to do the next Mm -hmm. seven seconds. Right. And I think what happens when you reach the end of the project, Mm -hmm. you don't have that. That's what you're talking about. You don't have that next thing to do. And that's where enjoyment that's where success, right. that's where fulfillment comes from, right. is, in, is in accomplishing that next step. Right. Now, he, he has a couple of quotes in here mm-hmm. when, when getting to, yeah. you know, what, what do you do about it? Right. He has a couple of quotes in here that I, that I really dig. Mm-hmm. The first is, growth and success don't happen at the same time. Right. That's right. Mm-hmm. Because Just think about that. Because what he talks about earlier in the article is that... And, Earlier this week, we talked about we're going to define success. Success is not the achievement. It's right. not the money. It's not the fame. It's not the status. Right. What what's what feels good is growth. Right. And he's saying in this first sentence that growth and success right. don't happen at the same time. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the other line is um, a little bit more provocative. Success is the enemy right. of growth. Right. And again, uh, just just let that marinate just a little bit. That one should go up somewhere too. Yeah, you know that should be that should be somewhere right next in the to office. your Chinese proverb. Right. Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it should be uh, in that same list. Um, yeah, uh, I like that one too. Yeah, that was my, that was my probably my favorite out of all these. Yeah. All right. So mm-hmm. so what do you, again? What he's talking about here is that if you if you feel like you have, and and, and so many of these things overlap with right. things that we talked about before. You know, never being satisfied was one of the right. 30 things from yesterday. Never stop learning. Um, never stop learning, right. right. Um, if you feel mm-hmm. like this is the ultimate destination, if I mm-hmm. once I can do this or once I have achieved this, that's the ultimate destination, right. mm-hmm. that's success, you're going to stop growing. Right. You know, right. That's why success is the enemy of growth. If you have achieved everything that you plan to achieve, right. Then there's no reason, no no motivation, no drive to grow anymore. Correct. And right. so now you are, um, now your growth has stopped. Right. Right. And so that's why enemy the success is the enemy of growth. And our professional organizations build that in. I guess right. they know that about humans is that we have to constantly do continuing right. education, and that's the reason you right. have to keep. But the best professionals, regardless of the field, mm-hmm. the best professionals are those who are constantly learning right. and constantly growing and Expanding. constantly improving. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Once you you know, and you and I know a, a number of people who. Uh, finish the terminal degree, whether mm-hmm. it's an MD or DDD or LD or PhD, and it sort of stops. Mm-hmm. And then they don't really add much to that over mm-hmm. the years. Okay, right. and growth either slows down or stops completely. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I love talking about this to to especially teenagers. Sure. Because they're like, yeah. oh, wait a minute, you still you still have to take classes. Right. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. I got You got to keep learning. There's right. a, you. you you got to keep There's reading. another you certification. Keep There's another license. There's yeah. another training. I, I told a kid the other day, I was like, yeah, yeah. I came in this morning and I, I, I was studying about that, that, mm-hmm. and it just, he just couldn't comprehend. Sure. Because you know, they, what, they what probably assume studying? that we know everything we're supposed to know. Yeah. You know, this, yeah, we're just scratching the surface. There's always more stuff. And this right. is where, you know, you mentioned this, um, in yesterday's podcast, this is where the idea of an apprenticeship right. comes. Right. You know, if you remember, um, though most of us weren't alive when this was really the main way in which we learned things yes. through apprenticeships, right. you know, before there were so many formal schools and things mm-hmm. like that, everybody, whatever it is that you were going to do right. as a profession, you've learned through an apprenticeship with somebody who was already a master. Yeah. Either your father, right. Um, or a relative mm-hmm. or a friend of the family, you, right. you got into some other business and mm-hmm. you learned that craft. Um, by uh, you learned that craft from from somebody who already knew how to do it. You right. learned it from a master right. um, craftsman. Right. Yeah. Right. So we still have it to some extent when it comes to you know really specific training like ele- right. electrical, electrical training and right. plumbing and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, but the idea I, again, I really like the idea of, of 
thinking about everything as an apprenticeship. Right. You know, That's right. You're constantly learning. Think there's always your, someone who knows more than you do. Think of your life as an apprenticeship. Right. Mm -hmm. There's there's always somebody who knows more than you do. They have more experience than you do right. about a particular thing. Sure, you may you you may have a lot more knowledge about one aspect of your mm -hmm. life than they mm -hmm. do. But, you know, I want to learn as much as I can from this person in this domain because right. this person is the master uh, as it relates to knowledge in that area. So right. I'm going to learn and be an apprentice from them. And then this person is really good at this stuff, and so I'm going to learn from right. them. At, at, at the risk of being a little bit preachy, um, I want to make a comment to the millennials okay. because they take a sometimes they take a bad rap. About, Often. Yeah. Um, people complain about the millennials, that they're lazy or they're this or they're not committed or whatever. One of the, a little piece of advice that I think this particular uh, topic um, applies to you in some ways. Because I think that you grew up on a diet of, this is all you have to do. Right. You know, if you're successful in school and you get a degree, right. that there will be this wonderful job waiting for yeah. you. Yeah. And that you're so talented and you're so bright mm -hmm. and you're so accomplished and you're so well educated that you can just step into um, a position of leadership, right. let's say. Or it's not how it works. Mm -hmm. It has never worked that way. And it's not going to work that way. You've done what you've been asked to do right. to age 22 or 24 or 26. Mm -hmm. That's just the beginning. Right. Now your apprenticeship must continue. Right. So think of your life not as completing a journey, but of continuing your apprenticeship. Right. Roll up your sleeves and get to work and work hard. Continue yeah. to grow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't stop. You no. Um, you're you're just starting. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, there, there's there's always more. Right. So keep right. going. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. That's you good. everything from this? All right. Well, great. Check out this the full article. The right. the link is in the show notes. It, it's a it's mm -hmm. a well-written, great. Yeah, I'd take a long, slow read of this one, especially yeah. if you're struggling with what should I do and why, how should I do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this guy seems to, to know a lot about what he's, mm -hmm. what he's talking about. Right. Um, he's written a couple of books and stuff like yeah. that, so it's mm -hmm. good stuff. So... Um, we mention it every time, of course. You know, make sure that you're following us on on iTunes and Google Play and and uh, YouTube or wherever you, you find us. Mm -hmm. And you know, write a review, rate us, because uh, it increases our our visibility, so other people can find us and they can join in on the conversation as well. Right. Um, comments, uh, especially positive comments, are always great. Mm -hmm. um, you know, make sure that you write to us on YouTube. We try to respond to everybody's uh, right. messages, mm -hmm. and, and we'll try to respond and engage in the conversation with you because we think that that's important, and really that's why we're doing all of this. Right. Um, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash the mental breakdown. It's a great way if you have the, the, the means and the ability and the interest, mm -hmm. you can help support some of the work that we're doing because it, it, it's going to buy us time. Right. We need time so that we can um, give it to somebody else for them to do some of the, right. a lot of the technical work that they are probably much, much better at than I am. Right. And then we can <laughs> spend our time doing some of the things that we want to do to bring you more information and right. more, uh, more mm -hmm. resources. Yep. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't, it buys us time. Right. That's what we're looking for. We're, we're looking for more time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. That is it for today. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid.